Okay, so we have Gaussian open. Does everybody have it? Okay. Go to the help menu. Help contents. It pulls up a browser, and the help is in the browser. And this is how you teach yourself Gaussian. They have really extensive help files. And so, the, you know, a lot of times you go to the help file, like if you're in like a Microsoft product, no you know, disrespect to Bill Gates, but, you know, you say, gee, how do I do such and such? And you go in and it basically tells you which menu item to click, but it doesn't tell you anything about it. Now, Excel is pretty good. Excel has a pretty good help file, but a lot of times the help files are useless. You know, they, they, just, they just didn't spend enough time really serving the users of their software by, by making a detailed help file, but Gaussian's not the, ca not the case. The Gaussian program has a pretty extensive help file. So if you're trying to do something in an optimization or transition state or, or whatever, you're running into trouble, then the help file is the way to go. And one of those options is the restart option. So let's try to find in the help file the restart, how to restart a job. <clears throat> So this keyword, Gaussian 09 keywords and the keyword list, that's the area you're going to find the, the, you know, all of the different keywords. So here, when we talk about keywords, like uh, B3LYP is a keyword. The, the basis set designations are keywords. Opt is a keyword. So all of these things that it's looking for, to, that you're telling it to do, uh, is, are keywords. And restart right here is one of the keywords. So let me go ahead. Uh, in order to use restart, you definitely have to have a checkpoint file. So if you sometimes, uh, like in a fast, simple calculation, I've, I've run calculations without a checkpoint file. Um, it still creates a temporary one, but uh, I didn't really care to save the wave functions or anything uh, in the checkpoint file. But if you're doing optfreak, it automatically generates a checkpoint file. So because it has to use that to store the geometry, and then it starts the frequency calculation and pulls in that geometry from the checkpoint file. So if you do optfreak automatically, your checkpoint file will be whatever the name is you gave your GJF. GJF is a Gaussian log file. Maybe I should put some of these file names up here. So, okay, so the Gaussian job file. We also have the CHK. Now the checkpoint file is in uh, binary, so if you try to read it, you're not going to be able to see it. So you can do a formatted checkpoint file. Sometimes you'll see F check, so uh, F C H K is a formatted. And that one is ASCII, but it's enormous because it took what was efficiently stored as binary and now made it ASCII and paginated it and everything, so there's spaces and stuff, and it's, uh, it's huge. Uh, but sometimes you need to operate on a formatted checkpoint file. But this is important. Whenever you're saving your input jobs, go ahead and use GJF as your job extension because then Gaussian knows to, to start with that, with that type of file. Let's see, what other files are there? Oh yeah, so the, the output files are dot .log or dot uh, out. out. Yeah, log or out. You'll also want to make sure that 
double clicking on these will open something like WordPad or Notepad. And so you may want to adjust your file extensions in your computer. So it associates a log file without, with a, or an out file with um, Notepad. The log files probably already are associated with a text editor, but a GJF is not. And it'd be nice if you double clicked on a GJF if it pulled up Notepad rather than launch Gaussian, because you may not necessarily want to do a calculation. You may just want to look inside that file and edit it. And so I always associate GJF file extensions with my Notepad. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about with file extensions, this goes back again to MS-DOS, where all your file names were eight characters, and then a dot, and then three characters. And the three characters were used to decide what type of file that was. We had the BAT for a batch file uh, that was uh, for like text-based scripts, which we learned last time that you know making a batch file that run would parse uh, and pull output from our log files. Log is obviously a, like a like a catalog file, but EXE was an executable. And most of the time, the default now for Windows is to hide those file extensions. So you may not see them. So you save it as a .gjf, and then you go look at it, and you don't see that .gjf. But it's there. It's because you're hiding them. So you can go into the options in, in whatever your viewer is for your file system, and you can enable it to show you those file extensions. I always do that because I like to see the whole thing, and I like to be able to edit them sometimes. Like you can go in and edit the .out and change it to the .log if you're particular. Sometimes I'm particular. Not always. <clears throat> and so in, in looking at the restart, let's see. And so what you do is you would, you would have the, the full calculation, like the root card and everything, like you were going to run that calculation again. And instead of putting the molecular uh, specification, you know, the geometry of the molecule, you put restart in the command line, the root card. And when you do that, it'll pull the geometry and the previous calculation, and it will start it again. So that's, that's one of the most useful commands. Um, let's look at this batch file. So on Gaussian, one of the things that you can do under utilities is edit batch list. And so this comes up with the, this dialog box, the, the batch control list, and you can add a Gaussian calculation. So it, should go to my scratch directory by default. No, it goes to UNW. And so I've got a couple of calculations here. I'm going to put one in, open. Okay. And then it's asking me to enter the output file name. I'm going to put .log on there so that matches what I expect. Okay. And so then that's, that's batch calculation number one. Okay, so then you hit add again. Okay, and then you click on the next calculation you want to put in the queue. Hit open. It will ask me for the output file. So I'm changing these to LOG just because I'm picky. Okay, and hit OK. And so you see it's set up two calculations that will run one after another. And so if you want to build up a bunch of molecules and so on, you can do that. And then you can come in here and you can load those input files in this batch mode and run it from Gaussian. Instead of starting your job from Gauss View, you can build it in Gauss View, save the input file, and it says, do you want to submit this to Gaussian? Say no. Then build the next molecule, save the input file. Do you want to submit to Gaussian? Say no. And so you say no a bunch of times and you set up a whole bunch of input files and then go to Gaussian itself set up this batch list and then you can 
reorder them. You know, let's say for whatever reason you decide you want to do them in this different order, then you can come in and reorder them. And then if I say start set, I think it's going to run. It didn't. Maybe I need to save it. Okay, so I'm going to say, I'm just going to call it test. Now that's what, we've got a new file extension. Batch control file, okay? And so the Gaussian's gonna run that batch control file and it'll be ready to go. So now let's see if it'll start the set. Okay, so no, it's not starting. Okay, when I hit exit, it loaded it here. See batch data? It's got test1.bcf, processing one of two. So it's going to tell me which one it's working on. And then you just hit the play button up here to get it started. All right, so it's off to the races. I don't exactly know how long these are going to take. Yeah. Shouldn't be too bad. Let's see what happens if I um, if I kill this one. Will it go on to the next one? No, it looks like it killed everything. Hmm. Let's try it again. Let's see, what does this one say? Yeah. I don't get any pop-up tools. Okay, so I click that. It says batch processing will end after the present job. So just play around with these little tools and see. Batch, into the batch, yeah, right? into the batch. Um, yeah, I killed everything, job and batch. So just play around. Um, get to know the software. And so that's the main point, you know, of... There's one thing to teach you in theory, like what we did with the Kahoot. Okay, here's what you can do with all these different methods, but it's a total different thing to actually do it yourself. And I want you to um, be comfortable figuring it out. You know, playing around, punching the buttons, see what happens. Okay, going to the help file, solving those problems. Now, if you do run into one, like uh, Shalisha and I were talking about solving this problem with the delta H of formations and things. Um, uh, you know, you need to be thinking about how you're going to document at least one problem that you overcame. Because that's part of the, that final report. Is the, there's a little section, a paragraph or two on, here's a problem I ran into, and here's, I had to think on this one. You know, it wasn't just, oh, I pushed the wrong button. You know, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the delta H of an exothermic reaction is endothermic. Why? Right? And so what would you do to solve that? I'm not saying that that's the one you have to do, but I'm saying that's the kind of problem that you have that you're like, okay, I've got to actually sit down here and think about this. And so you need to sort of tell me how you th thought through it. So I want to see how you overcame that problem. Did you go to the help file? Did you do some more research? Those are all valid things. Went to the literature, went back to the beginning, rebuilt the molecule, looked at animations or something, like a vibrational animation to see, oh, it was messed up. Like I was trying to calculate the geometry of this copper uh, water complex, and it never ended. It kept dying after 99 steps. So finally, I looked, and it was dissociating. A proton was coming off. So it was trying to find the location for that proton in this molecule. And of course, it's just rolling around the outside surface of the molecule. It's never going to come to rest, really in a well. And so I had to investigate. That was the thing that my problem solving skill was saying I had to find a way to investigate what was going on. That would be really difficult to see without the visualization tools. Because I had to follow the Cartesian coordinates for something that had, let's see, uh, 
three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, nine, nineteen atoms, and follow the Cartesian coordinates for nineteen atoms. So there's three n, nine, you know, three n, nineteen times three, different numbers, to try to find. Oh, look, this hydrogen is really the only thing changing. I mean, I could probably figure it out, but it sure helped to have a visualization tool like Gauss view. So, so that's what I would write up. I would write up the paragraph, say, okay, I figured out maybe the visualization tool, looking at the optimization paths, you know, seeing the, the different geometries and what they did. I was trying to see if I could skip this job and go on to the next one. Yeah. Well, it says, kill job, in batch, kill batch. Kill batch now? Can you see that? What? Can you see the message from the bottom? Oh, down there, kill batch now. Kill batch now. Kill the currently X, batch runs may continue with the next job. Okay. Okay, so I did that. Let's see if it goes to the next job. I didn't like that may. So batch processing may continue <laughs> with the next job. It may not. A mother may I, you know? That's a kid's game. Maybe there's like an option that we should put in the batch file that tells us to go like, I don't know. Of course, you know, it, it can't continue on if you're doing opt, yeah, like opt freak, where it's trying to get an optimized geometry. It's not going to continue. But these are two independent calculations, I believe. Uh, yeah, anyway. No, it's restarting yeah. the batch. So let me try that again. This was utilities, no. What was that? Process, process. process, yeah. Kill job. What is this one? Open SAO. Oh, it's just open, okay. Yeah. And so we're pretty much out of time. But uh, like I said, play around with these. Okay, so maybe this is the second one that it's doing. No, it didn't. It's Oh, it's just actually running it. Oh, it's just running it, yeah. Just a single job. Okay. Okay, cool. Now you can edit that BCF file. Uh, I think I didn't save it. But you can edit it in a text editor. So if you were, while it's running that batch file, I think you can go in and you can edit and add new, new files onto the end. So you can just keep that batch file filled up and wear that computer out. I mean, it's waiting on you, you know, and if you, you just keep loading things up. So, you know, if you, you sit down at a computer and people are like, I'm using this for Gaussian, don't touch, right? But if they're running a batch control file, you can just put your file name, your input name, comma or tab over and an output name and save and when their calculation is done yours will start yeah and that's pretty cool and that way we can get 11 people to use 10 computers <laughs> right of course some people are using their laptops so it works out but it's not going to happen batch process that goes to an error it automatically start the next one I'm, I'm, it's a little unclear with this morning, you know, we were killing that one and it wouldn't go to the next one, so I'm not exactly sure it should. When the link ends, and if it ends in, um, abnormally or, or normally, it should go to the next calculation in the queue, because that's the whole point of doing batch calculations.